It's January 11th, 2016. Yep. Day four, banging in to the crazy nuclear industry. We're only half of these available for some reason. And how is everybody? This morning, we're late on the stream. If you have problems with your stream, it could be your bandwidth. It could be mine, don't get me wrong. But it could be your bandwidth you're trying to stream in too high of a resolution. And so today, we are really going to hammer into this subject by using Rod Adams and his merry crew of mass killers as a prime example that the future is being taken from us, is being stolen by crazies that are like, there's no one said, hey, you guys get out here. They, they got together and done this on purpose. And so episode one, two, and three, we established who they are, what they do, their credentials, and do they know the difference, are they educated, and the basic stuff that they say. And what you're doing is you're deconstructing a radio show. But this is their life. This is how they make money. And it's kind of like the mob underlings going out and killing somebody to show their allegiance. That's exactly what you're seeing here is the mob, the, the nuke industry. It's full of these people that feel they have to be dark, really dark, and, and really out of the touch. Yeah, good point. You, you can't measure that stuff from uh, by turning on an instrument in North America, so it's, it's basically out of sight, out of mind. And so you think about, you're talking about pollution down there, and they're complaining because they can find radiation in North America with Geiger counters. But you can find any pollution in North America with a Geiger counter, yeah? that comes over, we know forest fires comes over, we know automobile pollutions come over, and we know Fukushima came over. Now, I took that picture on an expedition, and all those people are just me, superimposed uh, in the picture. That's my Zodiac, blah, blah, blah. We'll get to that later. I, I think that uh, the fossil fuel industry in Japan was so relieved to have Fukushima happened because it completely took everyone's mind off all the other stuff. Yeah, but it was a great opportunity to run many natural gas commercials during all of the media attention. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, there, was, there was... Now, the reason they're talking about the oil refinery and everything else is they're spin doctors. They're attempting to be. I mean, they're, they're pricelessly stupid and incompetent and twisted and demented and evil, but the fallout is well known. There would be a hazards because of constant wind blowing but, in that uh, area. Uh, it, everyone just really forgot about the earthquake and the tsunami. As soon as the, the nuclear plant, the hydrogen explosions occurred. Whoop. Whoopie do. Um, little play, let her say that. So we're left it, off everyone yesterday. Everyone just really forgot about the earthquake and the tsunami. As soon as the, the nuclear plant, the hydrogen explosions occurred, whoopee. Now, the internet and media never stopped on the tsunami for months, yeah? But the worry was this, because it was ongoing. So we, they knew that the aerosols came over and they made models, right, of the radiation. And the uranium spiked in Hawaii 50 times because that happened. Because it actually blew up and sent it straight up. And Southern California and Seattle right away. Yeah? And there was this unprecedented phenomenon from using salt water. 
it forms a, a, what they call a new uranium compound. What they knew about a, a, like in ABLE testing and the nuclear bomb testing rather in the ocean from the atolls and everywhere, um, different countries. They knew they formed these uh, uranium peroxide hydrogen buckyballs. And they were found in California, by the way. And the reason they were found in California... Oh, I smurfed that up. I'm going to go way up. Hang on. I dragged that accidentally to the bottom of the frame. But we'll get it. There we go. So 1,500 atoms were detected in California air. But what did that... Why did that happen? Well, it happened because that... And because the five reactor cores were on top of the building, yeah? And the tops of these pools are 100 feet above ground. <clears throat> and... And they're missing because that happened, right? But... Tends to concentrate in the male's testicles. Now, that's important. Remember that number, 360 of these sulfur peroxide hydrogen buckyballs with radioactive isotopes in them. Too bad. I mean, Rod Adams' brain would actually fit in one of these buckyballs. And this is what happened to everybody in North America. But here's a documentation of it. That was it. Even though that was not the most... Uh, spectacular footage I've ever seen. I've seen much more, you know, from, from on local TV. Of I course. Assume. You're talking about a refinery. Yeah, uh, They're trying to lead it, people it away that it wasn't. Trust me, it, was very, it, it wasn't important. Over 1,000 nuclear workers. Hang on, let's finish that one. Even though that was the drive I've ever seen. I've seen much more, you know, from, from on local TV. Of I course. Assume. Yeah, it, it was very frustrating. Trust me, it was very, very frustrating. Oh, God. Well, this is where well, I get, this is where I get into my gas plant blew up in Connecticut a couple of years ago, killed six people. They were workers in the plant. That's uh, Gwen. That's six more people than have ever died in, in nuclear plants, commercial nuclear. Right, and. That's the size of Rod's brain and his fingers during the picture. There's over a thousand nuke workers with internal counts of 10,000 counts per minute. But that's just of one isotope. You'll understand that in a few minutes. Think about the reactor building, the reactor cores right now, stored for 10 years. And then the reactor core itself is... is one skyrocket. That's right. Just two years ago... There was a natural gas pipeline that blew up, destroyed 50 houses, and killed eight people. So, right. And yeah, but 100 sievers an hour kills everybody that gets close to it, Rod. And there's hundreds of thousands of people walking through this plant. These are, anybody get that close is dead. These are all me. But anybody that would get that close will die within a couple of weeks if just a moment. But anybody hanging out there... Uh, are dead men walking. Nuclear radiation, most carcinogenic thing that exists. So, anyway, the, one of the things as as we went along, you know, the there were the the explosions, and of course, you know, they they lasted a very brief period of time, and there was no real fire after those explosions. It, yeah. Okay. Whatever. What happens is you get half a million beckles far, far away from there, far, far away. Even in North America, what you're looking at is an extinction event in British Columbia, Canada. That's an extinction event. You'll find that documentation up at the nuclearproctologist.org. We went out and done the whole coastline, but today we're talking about the crazies. The ambulances were coming to the plant 10 times a day. Do you know why? Because that fucking happened. Look. Do you get it? Radioactive force or permanent risk, Ron, Rod. The buildings are completely gone. They were 190-story buildings. Look at the depictions. Use your own common sense. And they say radioactive 
Materials like cesium are brought back to the surface soil each year by the plant growth and pollination because there was so much of it because that happened, right? It's gone. It's gone, see? 51% of the kids were contaminated with cesium-137, which is a tracer. It's game over for those children. They breathed in some of those hot particles. It'll kill them. And cancer is the last one to show up. There's 1,800 diseases show up before cancer. So how many times have you seen the picture of one of the hydrogen explosions from one of the reactors? There was three of them. And so how many times have you seen the same picture? Well, they only blew up once, Rod. Not like there's going to be a whole bunch of different pictures of the building. The building can't blow up again, Rod. Lots of times. Oh, yeah. It's and it, oh, it doesn't look like much. It's sort of a steam. <laughs> yeah, it looks like steam. There you go. Steam. That's Gwen. Did you say underground Fukushima plant is cracking? Radioactive steam is coming up. Melt a car, maybe moved out of the building August the 17th, 2011. You know what he said that? Because look at it. I'm going to call you, um, you know, <laughs> you know, I wanted to, what, like you eat an ice cream and you got this little piece of wood left in your hand. That's her brain. You know, it's not nearly as interesting That's as Margaret. the refinery fire picture. She's really <laughs> something. Yeah. So it's not away. as interesting. Yeah, it's in like a distance and it could be just. No, that's not interesting, you know. The height of Fukushima. Emergency regions in California where the plume hit. You know why the plume hit there? Because that friggin' thing is all missing. A six, six reactor cores alongside of each building. You know, it's not nearly as interesting as the refinery fire picture. Yeah, but the camera was so far away. Yeah, it's in like a distance, and it could be just. Uh, where I, I, in California, where I am. You're in California, that's right. And in California, they turned it all off, so how could it be interesting nobody had any reports of it? New York Times contributor confirmed the California rainwater of iodine 131. Well, that would mean all of that is there. Curium is the biggest byproduct of the, fucial, uh, the nuclear fuel rods. And these people are all fuel rods, rights for fuel rods, cycle week, and all the other magazines. <laughs> Radioactive force uh, particles appear to concentrate over uh, her region, where she's too. No big worry. She's uh, a groupie, a crazy, uh, insane person. The reason that happened was because this blew up and the jet streams were actually real. Just like the other stuff that comes over, forest fires, automobile pollution. Uh, there's a place called Moss Landing on the central coast where they have a uh, gas, natural gas company, uh, you know, utility company. And they have these tall chimneys with steam coming out of them. And that's what the steam thing kind of looks like. Right? Heard yeah. that? So what they're doing is they're mitigating the steam, which is the radioactive releases that were constantly coming up out of there two years later. This is what they were up to. White wispy kind of. Yeah, white wispy. White haze above number three was probably... Let me read that headline again. Number two was the steam from number three also. But also, you got to realize the fuel rods went all over the site. If they don't got water, the, the zirconium cladding catches fire and they stand a chance of melting down into their own little chain reactions and disappearing. So why they got 10 feet of cement and pavement there? The common spent fuel pools are being sprayed with water. Oh, Jesus. Remember this kind of stuff? <laughs> Remember that. That's why I just said those words. Because it's common spent fuel pools were underground. 
everything got swept away on that ground, yeah? And these detonations would have leveled the common spent fuel pools. Keep going. Well, when that's what you got, that's what you, that's what you run. Uh, so all the spare spent fuel pool clearly have damage, yeah? And, what, and that's number three. That clearly has nothing left. Yep. Um, this all seems to me to get back to something that uh, is becoming a bit of a hobby horse, so forgive me for jumping on it and writing. <laughs> but no. until the people who uh, cover... Uh, people in the news industry are sat down and educated about what radiation can and cannot do and about how even oh oh well here's Gilmetty what did Gilmetty teach us I wonder yeah here puppy come see Dr. Raymond Gilmetty there's thousands of these out there. 144 beagle dogs. The dogs inhale once. Woo. Wow. It's like crack. Nuclear crack. Only problem is it kills you in about five years. At least all the dogs did. And they done it in all the studies by professionals. Dog killers. 25, I'm sorry, 35 years butchering the little doggies. And that's the kind of radiation we're talking about. If you go to their story, which is 199, it doesn't take you long to find out. Halfway down the paragraph. Oh, radioactivity is less than the natural activity of a banana. That is the lowest form of life. That's what a nuclear power plant has to fire him, take his pension away. That's why the Navy has to yank the pension away. Like, you gotta re realize what he's doing. He's not naive at all, the, or them. The, the UN groups uh, who look into this stuff do not go along anymore with the linear non-threshold uh, hypothesis. Uh, the, we're gonna get these distorted, dire uh, reports that induce panic. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking, uh, right now of the Three Mile Island panic when they said radiation had been detected outside the plant and everybody jumped into their cars and stepped on the accelerator. Something like 100,000 people hit the road. Got out of uh, Dodge. Probably, I don't Lucky know for them. The since it might have happened in that situation, but you can imagine the, the, the risks that would go up. So uh, I'm, I know someone who wrote two books on risk, David Ropek, who you know, understands how radiation works and what the risks are versus the benefits. And he wants to go around to newsrooms. He's himself a former reporter and now teaches at Harvard and educate people about, uh, educate newsrooms around the country. Spend wow. a year doing that, just teaching them, you know, about Bananas. radiation so that they can cover it in an intelligent way. Yeah, like like you guys cover like less than a banana and a glass of beer or Brazil nut, you wacky, creepy, disgusting maggot. Inhaling just one radioactive hot, part, hot particle can cause cancer, but cancer is 10, 20, 30 years down the road. Alzheimer's, dementia, autism, heart, liver, lung, respiratory, pituitary gland issues, 1,800 illnesses, diseases, autoimmune deficiencies will show up long before the cancer. And they can all cause you to liquidate your assets for your loved ones or yourself long before the cancer shows up. Dipstick. Three workers suffer cardiac arrest at an incinerating plant because they're burning it all over the country. You know, Gwyneth, I work with nuclear professionals um, <laughs> on my day job. And I've had some pretty uh, heated conversations with some of my colleagues who are uh, unfortunately just as afraid of minor doses of radiation because they've been trained for their entire career that their oh, yeah. mission is to reduce doses to as low as 
are reasonably achievable, and, and they uh, have a completely different definition of the word reasonable than I do. Um, you, you don't matter, because you don't matter, man. You talk about bananas and Brazil nuts and potato chips and getting on airplanes and sunshine. Like, what kind of creature would do that? Because it's, it's patently untrue. Why would you do something like that unless you're evil? If you're evil and just completely hate humanity and, and your own friends and families and loved ones and anything they covered, you would spew up these lies. If you, if you say any of these connotations, no matter which way you try to flip that connotation, it's a direct law. So if I give your daughter a bunch of pills and I tell her it's like a banana, but it's actually poison, she dies for it. Are you going to be angry at me because I said it was like a banana? Are you going to be demanding? Your honor, he said it was like a banana to kill her. But what about it takes 20 years or 30 years? Because Rod Adams and these people know that is what they're doing. How is that not a crime? How is that not a crime? What they're going to find out in the near future is all their audios, all their shows, all their writings are going to come back and that they will be prosecuted for what they're doing. It will catch up to them. I guarantee it. That is the near future because of what happened, because of how severe this actually is. But how demonic do you got to be to say any of these connotations, sunshine, eating bananas, sleeping next to someone, etc., etc. You'll find the extinction event of British Columbia, the Pacific coastline, 15,000 miles up at my site. We documented it. It's real. And everything we're showing you today, and the reason we're showing it to you is because this is what the truth is up against is people with zero remorse. With zero remorse. And it's shocking that these people don't see anything wrong with what they're saying. You know, Gwyneth, I work with nuclear professionals. Yeah, and look what you write, though. Bananas and Brazil nuts. And they... These are academics all over the world. It's not just these crazies. These academics all over the world have been doing it. So this Berkeley professor shouldn't have been criticized. He should have been ostracized. He should have been prosecuted. He should have been had his degrees taken away. The university's coming out and disavowed him and his kooky red rake immediately like the nuclear power plant should do and for Rod. Unfortunately, Rod. that's... That's the way we have, and there are people who accept the linear no threshold uh, assumption. It's not an assumption. The studies on the beagle dogs show definitively, yeah, they got fairly big doses compared to what I'm a single atom, but that single atom will sequester in their muscles, their organs, their bones. Their white blood cells will come out and attack and displace in the red blood cells with the oxygen and the nutrients the body needs and allow all these diseases to manifest. But then they also before cancer. write pretty decent uh, risk balance uh, discussions. Uh, Robert Gale, for example, just published a book titled Radiation in which he, he completely accepts the linear no threshold dose assumption. But what he says is, what linear no threshold means is that a very low dose carries a very low risk. For a short, for a couple of decades, then it becomes a big risk because it's sequestered in your muscles, your organs, and your body. Your body attacks it for decades and builds a tumor around it. So what they like to do to the linear no threshold is no immediate observable damage, but the damage takes 10, 20, 30 years to manifest and be diagnosed. And these people are not fucking naive or gullible. These are murderers, period. And yep. when you compare that risk to the risk of other things, he says it's not worth worrying about. For 10 or 20 years. Until you get to 
you know, this bit, about the same doses as what I would call essentially a threshold. He says, "What you would call is irrelevant because you just." Lloyd, in every story, you started off with bananas and Brazil nuts and potato chips and walking in sunshine getting on airplanes. Everything You're below irrelevant. That, the risk is so low, it's in the grass of daily living. You have a history of being a monster. Why would you focus on that as opposed to, you know, driving more safely or... Because that's where your only time you're allowed to talk about is if you talk about this insignificant dose that doesn't harm you immediately the, the stress is always on no immediate health effect in every report in every media in every major in every platform in every format it's put it's contextualized that way because the damage is long term it's bioaccumulative if you're living in the environment avoiding secondhand cigarette smoke or you know, not. You can smoke cigarettes and quit and be okay. You suck in this stuff, it kills you 10, 20, 30, 40 years, or your children down the road. Uh, standing in. Or causes health deficiencies, illnesses, and we'll get to some of that. Underground garage full of buses, you know, all kinds of things that add risk to your life. Yeah, but you only need to suck in radiation once. That's why you have all. When you go to get an x ray, you wear these lead belts. Because it's just once. So if you were even normal person, the IAE at one point in it, there was no such thing as safe levels of radiation. If we can only get them to admit that these people now are in trouble, Rod refuses to acknowledge any of these, or his crew refuses to acknowledge any of this. Just four hours. These are dead people walking. A lot of these are dead a long time ago. This is six years ago. They're dead, a lot of them. They're sending in the homeless, the destitute, the victims of society. The reactors are 190 feet high, not 130 feet high, but the reactors are 150 foot wide. These are massive buildings. The reactor cores, uh, fuel pools were, the tops of them were 100 feet up in the air. Obviously, there's no 100 feet in the air. That's significant and frightening. And then people like Rod are being turned to looking and his crew of merry mass murderers are turned to in the hopes that people can make decisions for their friends and families and loved ones, and communities and country and animals and pets. And, and they get sucked in into these people who come across as, well, I worked 30 years in the submarine for the Navy. I got to have some credibility. At least hear me out type guy. Talks cool, brings in all kinds of talent that are actually vicious thugs. As demonstrated four days in a row. Far away from finish on a single audio show about how far off the mark they actually really are. And nuclear radiation is the most carcinogenic thing. Period. Pretty interesting way to think about it. Yeah, other uh, medical professionals I've talked to have, have I, I have a friend who's a radiation, radiologist, radiology diagnostician. She's a, an assistant professor at George Washington. And um, she says the same thing. She says she kind of thinks that linear no threshold is very conservative. She said the problem is that it's very difficult to settle this you aren't going to do human testing and so it's very very difficult to settle it there are ways and we all know that to not get trapped in there again but from her perspective it was a but look small dose small risk people are overreacting yeah tell that to the people who had their beagle dog stolen by dr raymond gilmetti tough cancer doctor and that radiological expert would have known this well, why do you think they're doing that do you think this was a coal mine they'd be dressed like that do you think this was an oil plant fire they would be dressing like that in their communities because there's a significant risk in cancer do you think that this is not covered and followed from the melted reactors that actually happened the detonations that actually happened the fallout that actually happened 
Do you think the food is a joke that the people stuck in that environment are not going to be eating that, at least that much in their food? Do you, do you really think it's conductive to your friends or your family or your legacy to lie and tell people that it's not going to harm you when it's well known that it will harm you? It's well known that there was a major amount that came in. Yeah, there. Just, it's, and the sad thing is, is that people are so afraid of radiation risk, they're sometimes refusing medical treatment. Yeah, hospitals refuse medical treatment to the workers. And like, you got to think about the range of nasties we're talking about. These are killer isotopes. Because they think it's going to damage them somehow. And it's, do you understand that your alternative is exploratory surgery and how dangerous The time of medical is? isotopes. Here's medical isotopes. When told about children's radiation concerns, the Japan's chief cabinet secretary blew up laughing because he wasn't worried about cesium, he was worried about uranium. And all the homeless and the destitute and the victims of society that they're piling in there, yeah? And the ambulances were coming in there 10 times a day, yeah? And what were they doing? What they were there? I wonder, they were getting the victims of Fukushima. Yeah, the victims of Fukushima. That's what you're looking at, the victims of Fukushima. On the roof to your left, because... Yeah. How many lives have been saved because nuclear technology is out there? How many lives have been saved because nuclear technology was out there? None of them. 5,000 suffered killer doses. That's killer doses. They were getting x-rays and neutrons and gamma shine. And they weren't wearing their suits on uh, buses on the way home. Our doses have all been increased significantly because of, of radiation, because of medical treatment. That was true. Our dose has been increased significant. 40% of them showed internal exposure. They will die soon because of that. It won't take 10, 20, 30 years, 40 years for them to die. We'll pick up the moral. 177. They'll die because it wasn't just cesium. And yet our lives are all longer because of that. And, and I'm not... Our lives are not longer. Their lives are not longer. Anybody living there. I'm going to say that it's hormesis. It's because the hormesis radiation... is where it's good for you. ...helping them detect dangerous problems and do something about them before they're they talking about medical where people are rejecting medical they're distracting by saying that oh we use it in medical it's good for you and talking about homesis where nature the natural potassium we're acclimated to death through genetic superior selection like everything else on the planet okay 23 and that's it. That's her. That's what we got. That's how she rolls. That's what we did today. Hugs for everybody. Thank you, everybody. And I know some people don't see the importance of my videos, and I can't help you. What you are doing is you're being educated and trained into the fine art of deception. And these are really professionals they're they're lacking a lot of chromosomes and everything else and they're no moral compass period i'm sure they covet their long one loved ones but their loved ones will never covet them no matter how many toys and trinkets they buy or how much creature comfort they can provide their loved ones will fear them they have a dark side they can't hide it they these are killers they are at it all the time. They revel in it. They revelry. They have a camaraderie. They have this unspoken pack where they can sniff the air and smell each other. And if they're on the sidewalk, you should cross the street. I would not feel safe in that community with these people. Certainly not on that street or not in that home. Hugs for everybody. Thank you, everybody. Welcome everybody. Hugs for Elaine, Johnny can never kill her. Stacy, Neil, Lauren. 
Rick, hi everybody. I'm out. Here we go. I was underwater yesterday. We got some great footage. We'll see everybody tomorrow morning, 10.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. British Columbia, Canada time. Take care.